Hi, students, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Victoria here in British Columbia on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week so far, staying healthy, staying strong, and looking forward to this class. Uh, welcome to our group of members, MA. I did see that you already sent an email, so we'll hook you up with the ASAP. Uh, everyone, this lesson is listening, part one and two. The goal, of course, is to hear the audio and know what you are listening to. All right. Welcome, March Denise. This lesson is presented to you. IELTS success. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at general.com. That's generalhelp.com. Uh, on both of those websites, we have loads and loads of materials to help you improve your English and your communication so that you can get those high, high band scores. Uh, while we wait for some of your peers to join us, let me just show you this real quick. Uh, this is our academic IELTS website here. We are a British Council IELTS Registration Center, and you just have to click that big red button to join our premium package. And when you click that big red button and join, you'll have access to all of our materials or apps as well. And it is just a one-time payment for lifetime access. Uh, it's the same idea for the general IELTS. And again, um, you just click that big red button, and it's a one-time payment for lifetime access or as long as you need it to pass the IELTS exam. Hi, honey, hi, Rashika. Good to have you in there. Um, Nancy, my voice is lagging. If anybody else is experiencing that, let me know. I would assume that that's more YouTube than me. Um, my system is as fast as fast gets. All right. Okay. Um, so... We have apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, uh, Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help, GLTS Help, lots of um, free materials on our Instagram for you as well. Uh, if anybody has questions, then uh, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. You can get a hold of me there. All right. Uh, Amazon has our exam books as well. You can search Amazon for these titles. And uh, again, just a quick reminder to everybody um, that from next week, so from May 5th, we're going to have a new class schedule. It's a schedule that everybody voted on. So uh, the new schedule will be UTC or GMT mat time or universal time, uh, 12.30 to 13.30 and 14 to 15 o'clock the usual days, Wednesday to Saturday. So that's going to be our uh, new schedule. Um, Juan, I don't think it's my microphone. Um, I mean, I can, I can play with it a bit, ladies and gents, but I don't think it's my microphone. I think it's uh, YouTube that's acting up a bit. Just give me a second. Let's see what I can do here.
Sound check, one, two, sound check. Can everybody hear me right now? If you can hear me, let me know. YouTube seems to be having an issue. Can you guys hear me or no? Hmm. Okay, it seems to be fine now. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, let's see. Again, I'm trying to do my best here, but uh, it's not really my setup this time. It's YouTube that's giving me some kind of weird error message I've never seen before. All right, well, let's give it a shot. Um, no guarantees. Unfortunately, I don't have the passwords to YouTube's uh, servers, so <laughs> that's not on my end. But uh, I'll try to, I'll try to keep it going. So we'll see. Okay. Um, if there's any difficulties, just let me know. Okay. Again, it seems to be a bit of an issue with YouTube. All right. So let's get into our listening. Um, so for this listening. I am going to jump over to our websites, and this is our third exam. So let me just get into our website here for the audio content. All right, and uh, on our website, you'll find lots of goodies, including audio CDs, and this is going to be uh, track number one from CD3. So. Now I'm going to play this audio through my microphone, so it is important that the microphone is working well. And um, if it's not, do let me know, okay? Um, and then uh, put your answers uh, into the chat only after the listening session. While you listen, put your answers on a separate piece of paper or write it into a separate document on your phone or on your computer. And then we'll share them later together, okay? So here we go, everyone, with uh, listening section one. So just like in the real exam, listen and answer. All right. Recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two women as one of the women registers her daughter for nursery school. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon, Monterey Primary, Jane speaking. Hello, my name is Diane Johnson. I was hoping to register my daughter for nursery school at Monterey Primary. Of course, Miss Johnson. Would you like to register your daughter for full day nursery school or half day or full day plus after school care? Oh, just the half day. I don't think Matilda could handle a full day away from home just yet. The woman says she would like to register her daughter for half-day nursery school. So A has been indicated for you. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon, Monterey Primary, Jane speaking. Hello, my name is Diane Johnson. I was hoping to register my daughter for nursery school at Monterey Primary. Of course, Miss Johnson. Would you like to register your daughter for full day nursery school or half day or full day plus after school care? Oh, just the half day. I don't think Matilda could handle a full day away from home just yet. So your daughter's name is Matilda Johnson? 
Yes, let me spell it for you. The first name is Matilda, M-A-T-I-L-D-A, and the last name is Johnson, but it's not the common spelling. It's spelt J-O-N-S-S-O-N. My husband is Swedish, which explains the different spelling. Right, and what is Matilda's date of birth? She was born December 25th, 2006. So she was born at Christmas. That is incredible. Yes, she was an incredible present to get for Christmas. It certainly was the most memorable Christmas I've had. Yes, I would imagine. OK, so now I need Matilda's personal education number, which she should have received in the post recently. I don't remember receiving such a letter in the post. It would have come from the Department of Education, and they always post things in yellow envelopes. You don't remember seeing a yellow envelope in the post? In fact, I do, but I didn't open it. My husband did. He didn't mention anything about a personal education number. Now he's away with work and I won't be able to reach him. Well, we can retrieve the number. I'm going to need your national insurance number as well as your husband's. I'm going to need your husband's name as well. My husband's name is Eric, with a K instead of a C on the end. His last name is Johnson, of course. His national insurance number is DF987745W and mine is KL409115N. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Right. OK, let me see here. All right. Here is a personal education number. I'll give it to you now so that you can write it down for future reference. It is T5634092. Just to make sure, the first character is T as in Thomas. Yes, and this letter in front of the number shows what region the child is originally from. The T in this case refers to Tyne and Weir. That would be correct, I'd imagine. Matilda was born in Newcastle, which of course is in Tyne and Weir. OK, so we have all the information about Matilda that we need. She is now registered for half-day nursery school in September. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. I was wondering what sort of training your nursery school teachers have. That is a very good question. Each of our teachers has, at a minimum, a two-year diploma in early childhood education. Many of our senior staff have bachelor's degrees in education, in addition to the two-year diploma. And our departmental head, Miss Janet Roth, has a postgraduate certificate, bachelor's degree and diploma. Do not worry, Miss Johnson, your daughter Matilda is in very good hands. That makes me feel a lot better. Can you tell me when the first day of school is? And also, will there be an orientation day for new students and parents? The first day of class is the 5th of September. And yes, we do have an orientation day. It takes place on the 3rd of September from 9 to midday. Parents and children are strongly encouraged to attend. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And make sure to check those answers uh, in that half minute, students. All right, let me just stop the audio and then we'll go through the answers together. Now, um, usually I take an extra step at the beginning when the instructions are going on. I didn't do that today. What is that extra step? So um, what's that step that, um, that's good to take at the beginning, which I did not uh, take today? So uh, what should you do uh, when you're hearing the instructions? Again, this will help you to hear and know the information, which is the title of today's lesson. So um, what is that? Okay, uh, before we give the answers, Gus says, show the next part. <laughs> That's usually what I do. Yeah, uh, see the next part, right? Absolutely. So Manvi says, look at parts two, three, and four. Yeah, just so that we get an idea of those parts. Um, absolutely. That's what you want to do. Okay. 
So I did, uh, during the example, get to part two and look at the topic of part two. Maybe some of you saw that. Um, part two will be something about a university. So I did check part two, but I didn't check part three or part four. So that means that those parts will be a complete surprise and that's not good, okay? Um, so I should look at those parts so they're not a complete surprise. Again, in the computer-based exam, it's really easy to look at the topic of each of the listening parts at the beginning because you can literally jump to them with just one click. Okay, you have like a navigation bar at the bottom of the screen in the computer-based exam and you can just jump to each of the sections and check uh, the topics, okay? All right, uh, now uh, everybody should know that since last year, 2020, they do not give an example in part one and they don't give an example in any part of the test. So unfortunately, you no longer have that kind of extra time or extra thinking available, okay? So there will not be uh, an example like this with um, uh, the answer given. So it'll go right into the first question. Okay, um, yeah, you can write all capital letters, Pavneet, in the paper-based exam or in the computer-based exam, just hit caps lock. Okay, number one, what is the woman's husband's nationality? So what is the woman's husband's nationality? A, B, or C, make sure you don't write the word uh, because then you'll get it wrong. Uh, blue, missing the B, berry, blueberry, uh, says Swedish. Yeah, so the correct answer here would have been B, absolutely, okay? All right, um, here we go. So how is a child's personal education number normally received? A, by post, B, by email, C, picked up from the school. Number two, now for these multiple choice questions when you're doing the exam, uh, the computer base, it's really easy because you just click. So um, in some ways it's less likely to make mistakes in the computer-based exam in the listening than in the paper-based exam because you just click it. But in the paper-based exam, you actually have to put the letter into the answer key. And I definitely recommend using capital letters for the multiple choice, okay? So big B, big A, they're a lot clearer for the examiners, so there's no mistaking the D for a B, okay? So um, A, by post. Now, uh, Blueberry says, I get distracted when they're spelling the names. Uh, don't get distracted, stay focused, and if you miss it, don't panic, they usually repeat it, okay? So, next multiple choice question. Now, always listen for the answer. Don't just look at the choices, but listen for the answer. So why is the husband out of town? Okay, why is the husband out of town? Is it because of a vacation? He went surfing? Um, is it because of work? He's got jobs uh, somewhere else? Or is it family reasons because he's got to visit an ill cousin or something? Um, yeah, that was work, yeah. So part one's quite clear, Rashika, you're right. Prathamesh, very good. Gus, yeah, so everybody got that B. Um, yeah, so the woman says he's out, of, she, he's out of town for work or he's away with work, something like that, but definitely work it is, okay? All right, let's keep putting along. Um, this is a multi-multiple choice uh, answer for these, especially if it's in part two or part three, take some notes while you listen. And in the computer-based exam, you have a piece of paper and you have a pen, so you can take notes also, okay? So number four, which three pieces of information are required to re uh, retrieve the child's personal education number? Um, Sadesh says it's C, D, and F, Honey agrees. So, um, yeah, the, very clearly, the uh, speaker says, the, the receptionist at the school, I should say, uh, says, I need um, the mom's and the dad's uh, national uh, insurance number, okay, um, and the name, okay? So, uh, the names, right? Now, 
Of course, uh, logically, she already has the woman's name because they introduce each other. So she introduces herself at the beginning, right? So the correct answer is C, D, and F, okay? So in space number four, if you're doing the paper-based exam, in space number four, C, D, and F, the order does not matter. You just have to put them in. Uh, taking notes, okay, like this. For these kinds of multi-multiple choice questions, keep the notes simple and fast. Practice doing that at home. Practice using symbols. So know the symbols for a woman and a man. Um, it makes it much faster. Or you could just do FM, female, male, national insurance number as well. That's easy enough. And then, of course, use logic. Personal insurance number. Nobody's going to take your personal insurance number unless it's your insurance agent. Personal insurance number is for insurance claims if you uh, become ill or in case of death or something like that. So that's not something a school is going to need for registration. A national insurance number in Canada, we call that a little bit different. Anybody know what we call a national insurance number? So British people call it a national insurance number. Anybody know what Canadians call it? Um, in different English-speaking countries, there's a little bit of a different naming system for this number. Uh, British call it the national insurance number. Your national insurance number is basically your identification for taxes, uh, possibly for health care or for certain other government administrative um, Tasks. So that's one of the first numbers that you will receive is when you become the, a permanent resident or a citizen of the UK. Anybody know, just to, uh, for interest, because as you know, I'm in Canada. Uh, anybody know what we call a national insurance number in Canada? We, yeah, classic says it's called a SIN. Yeah, that's the uh, abbreviation for it. Classic is S I N, a SIN. Um, it's not a social security number. Rashika, but close. Prathamesh, correct. Yeah, it's a social insurance number. Yeah, that's what we call it. So I figured there might be some people who are familiar with that. So it's called a social insurance number. British call it national insurance number. Canadians call it social insurance number. Or we just say SIN for short. That's right, classic. Very good. Okay, um, so next question. Uh, how is the husband's name spelt? A, Eric, E-R-I-C-K, B, Eric, E-R-I-C, or C, Eric, E-R-I-K. A, B, or C. Again, it's multiple choice, so make sure you're not writing uh, it down. Yeah, John, it is a nine-digit number. It's three times three numbers, the sin number. Um, all right. Uh, the correct answer here, classic, yep. Prathamesh, no. Rohit, yep. So... It's Eric with a K instead of a C. So correct answer is C. Uh, the speaker, the woman, she says, um, my husband is Swedish, so his name is with a K instead of a C. So it's Eric. These are all three spellings of Eric, um, but the Swedish version is with a K. Okay, so C was the correct answer. She says a K instead of a C. All right. Number six, what is Matilda's personal education number? Not a national uh, insurance number, but a personal education number for students. That's a very important number. You get all kinds of discounts in stores if you're a university student with your education number. Is it A, B, or C, T56340192, or C, T56P40192? Now, we know that it can't be B because the woman says, just to make sure it's T is in Thomas. And the woman says, yeah, it's T is in Thomas. Okay, uh, good job, Rohit. Sharpanj, nicely done. Gautam, yeah, it's A. So again, in part one, be patient with this. They kind of repeat the number. They clarify the number. So be patient, okay? All right, so that was A, T56. Three four zero one nine two. There was no other letter in there. Uh, where was the child born? So they have a little discussion about how the number 
uh, indicates the location of where they're from, Tyne and Weir. And then the mother says, yeah, that's correct, because Matilda was born in, yeah, that's right, Newcastle, A. Okay. Very good. A lot of you got that. Good job. All right. Uh, let's keep going. So this was another one of these multi-multiple choice. And they do love this type of question because you really do have to listen for the answer and not just look at the answers. Um, so what two qualifications do many of the nursery school's senior staff have? And so you have to pick two from six here. One-year diploma, two-year diploma, three-year diploma, master's degree, bachelor's degree, or doctorate degree? What were the correct answers? Sadesh says, with sunglasses on, it's either a two-year diploma or a bachelor's degree. And it looks like Honey, our member, as well as Mahdi and many other students, Umid, agree. Yeah, B and E. Okay, very good. All right, nicely done. Nicely done. Okay, next question here. Uh, question 9 to 10, complete the notes below, write, write no more than two words and or a number. Uh, what is the first day of class? So orientation day is September 3rd. That usually happens before the first day of class. When is the first day of class and what's the easiest way to write that? Okay, now again, you can use all capital letters for this on the exam to make sure that it's correct. Okay. PUBG Mobile with a little party swing says it's 5 September. Yeah, um, easiest way is Sept 5, okay? So September 5th, four letters with a five, nice and quick. Five Sept is okay as well. Sidesh, you have a capital S, so that's good, all right? Orientation day is the 3rd of September. Orientation hours, 9 to midday. And something and children should attend orientation. Rohit believes that last answer is parents. Rohit, you are correct. Nancy, you are also correct. Abrar, it's not a person. It's a parent. And it's not just a parent. It's both parents or plural. Uh, when you have plural here, okay, make sure you have plural here as well. Parents. Okay. It is a full sentence, so for correct English, you should have a capital P there. It does start the sentence, so uh, parents. Okay. All right. Well done. How did you do? So, And thank you for hanging in there with that little bit of a weird YouTube glitch that was at the beginning. Um, so how did you do? What did you get out of 10? I'm very curious. Now, your goal uh, in... Uh, Part one of the listening is to get nine or 10. Okay, that should be your goal because it is the easiest part of the listening. Okay. Rashika got nine. That's very good. Prathamesh got nine. Niranjan got 10. Gus got nine. Um, Blueberry got eight. Okay, it's not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's just jump right into part two. Let's do part two together. Glitch free. <laughs> And, uh, and we'll get right into it, okay? So same idea, students, for part two. Um, I'm going to play the audio answer. We'll go through the answers after. Don't put your answers into the chat because it's confusing for other students who are watching this. And if you're giving them wrong information, it's even more confusing. So just separate piece of paper, and then we'll share at the end together. All right, um, here we go. Let me fire up the audio from our website, aehelp.com, and then we'll go through this together at the end after, so hang in there. Uh, if you have a headset, use the headset. If volume's low, turn up the volume on your end. I'm at max volume on my end, so here we go. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a university campus tour. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon everyone. If you are here for the University Campus Tour, you are in the correct place. There are two purposes for this tour. For prospective students, you get to see the campus where you may be studying in a few months. And you get to learn some interesting information which may convince you to look favourably on our university. For parents, you get to learn what life is like at this university, so you know where you are sending your kids off to this autumn. Before we start the tour, I'd like to give you some background information. This university was originally opened in 1686, although from 1745 to 1805, it was shut down due to a lack of funding. The university is composed of 23 buildings, which were built in one of three periods. There were four original buildings in 1686. A dozen more buildings were constructed in the period from 1805 to 1815. And the final seven buildings have been added in the past 10 years. So there is a fascinating mix of 17th century, 19th century, and quite modern architecture. The first building we are going to look at is called the Prescott Building, named after the university's first chancellor, William Chester Prescott. As you can probably tell, this is one of the university's original buildings completed in 1686. The building is actually quite unique in shape. It is approximately 40 metres long, while only 8 metres wide. It also has these interesting circular areas attached to each corner, four of them in all. These four circular areas each house a large bell. None of the bells work today, however. As we walk in the door, I'd like to point out all of the beautiful Persian carpets on the floor. These carpets were donated to the university by a former student almost 150 years ago. It is very common for former students who have done well in life to give back to the university. Some give money, some give land, some give gifts such as Persian carpets. One former student even gave the university his pub after he died. By the way, that pub which is located at the intersection of 3rd Street and Pine Avenue, gives students of the university a 30% discount. Now, if that's not a selling point for this university, I don't know what is. On a serious note, it is our outstanding education which makes our university a top competitor on the global front. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Before we go any further, are there any questions? No? Right then. Next we are going to visit the University Library. As you see in front of the library, there is a beautiful fountain which shoots water high up in the air. Once again, the funding for the fountain came from a former student. In this case, a well-known artist. It was constructed just 15 years ago at the cost of £50,000. As we step into the library, I think what you'll notice at first is the fact there are no books. Indeed, there are no books at all on the entire ground floor. On the five upper floors, however, there are over three million books. The library's collection has been built over time through private donations, gifts from former students, as well as university purchases. There is also a special collections area where there are original works dating back to the year 1588. Next in our itinerary is a visit to the sporting facilities. Here at the university, we have over a dozen different facilities for almost any sport you can imagine, ranging from football and rugby to tennis and squash to archery and cricket. Our rugby team has won the national championship three out of the last five years. 
As you'll see on your left is a famous wall where we put pictures of. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Always use that half minute, students, to check your answers before going on to the next section. Uh, we're going to go over the answers now together. And we'll check how you did. Okay, so uh, here we go. So this was a filling out the table. Really pay attention to the information contained in the rows and columns. Write no more than two words and or a number for each answer. Uh, pay attention to that as well. Uh, when did the university open? So university opened in this year quite a long time ago. Yeah, UK has some very old schools indeed. Um, so what time did it open? Uh, Rahul says in 1686 and Navneet Sidhu agrees, and I agree with the both of you, uh, it was 1686, and that's actually the way that he says it. So uh, pay attention to that. In English, for uh, years like this, usually we break it into uh, two digits. So 1686, okay? So they won't say 1,686. <laughs> They'll say 1686. It's just uh, the way it's done, okay? All right. Uh, then for a number of years, the university has shut down. And then the man says that, well, altogether there are 23 buildings. Okay. And then talks a little bit about when these buildings were built, right? So <clears throat> in 1805, between 1805 and 1815, in these 10 years, there were a number of buildings constructed. It's kind of like when the university really got going. Uh, Sadesh says it's 12 or a dozen. <clears throat> yeah, so either or. So you could write 12 or you could write dozen. A dozen is indeed 12. If uh, you're buying a baker's dozen, it's 13. You get one bonus. For English speakers, the word dozen is easy to remember because there are two staple foods <clears throat> that we count in dozens. One are eggs, okay? This is just for your learning. A dozen eggs. I was kind of surprised that in Europe they have 10 eggs <laughs> to a carton. Um, in the US or Canada, and I think in the UK as well, it's a dozen eggs. So you get 12 eggs per carton, okay? So a dozen eggs. Um, or the other food that we buy in a dozen, anybody know? <laughs> this is kind of a fun bonus question. What's the other food other than eggs that Canadians, Americans, maybe British as well, buy in a dozen? Ah, NBX Gaming. I don't need a rest. I'm just getting started. Okay. Uh, not pencil, not bananas. Good try, NBX. Good try, Chini, not bananas, not pencil. It's a delicious food. I'll give you a hint. It's round. It's got a chocolate top. It's got a filling. It's not a fruit. It's not a dozen carton of milks. Sadesh, not bagels, but close. Not apples. Nope. Not pizza, Gus. We love pizza, but not buying them by the dozen. Close. It's a donut. Yeah, there we go. Jerry Joyce Pangan's like, it's a donut. <laughs> Prathamesh Sadesh says, donuts. Yeah, we buy a dozen donuts usually. So a dozen eggs or a dozen donuts. You'll never forget the word dozen now. All right. And you usually get a better deal when you buy a dozen donuts. Okay, so anybody who loves donuts, Tim Hortons, there you go. All right. Um, so in the past... Something years, seven more buildings were constructed. How many years? So number 13, 17, four or five, four, five. Haman says in the past 10 years, um, Blue agrees, Navneet agrees. Yeah, it was the past 10 years, past decade, past 10 years. Okay, number 14, you had to kind of identify the graph here. So, or the diagram, the Prescott building which is the first building that was built in um, 1686 was 
uh, built in a unique shape. Uh, how did it look? A, B, or C? Chinny and Gursha, everybody's saying B. Uh, PUBG Mobile says it's B, 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 B. Um, I agree. It's B. So it's long. It's like 40 meters long while only 8 meters wide, something like that. I believe um and bonus question what's in the corners here what are what are those okay what's in the corners let's see how many people are really listening if you want to really get a high band score like a band eight or a band nine you need to have this level of uh listening where you can catch even details that they're not really asking you Honey says they're bells. Yeah, they're <laughs> NBX Gaming. They're not toilets. Um, back in 1686, I'm pretty sure they had to go outside for toilets. Um, so, no, these would have been bell towers. They were bell towers that would have bells in them, right? Bell towers. So, bell towers, right? They loved their bells, especially back in the day. Ding dong, ding dong. Getting people into school or class or letting them know that there's some enemy coming on horses, all right? So bells, yeah, you maybe, <laughs> Blueberry says, so many bells, yeah, you want it to be really loud back then. If there were some soldiers coming to burn down the building, then you needed to know. All right, uh, question 15, right? No more than two words and or a number for each answer. How many years ago were the Persian carpets donated? So students who graduated from the university and were successful, they donated to the university um, 150. Yeah, just the number. You don't need the word years because it's in the question. So if the question were, when were the Persian carpets donated, then you write 150 years. But because the question says, how many years ago were the Persian carpets donated, um, you can just write 150. Okay, all right, so really pay attention to the contents of the question. Okay, question number 16, uh, what discount do students receive at the local pub? So they get a bit of a 3% three, 3 I think that would be, uh, that would be kind of a joke, so that doesn't make sense. 40, pub might go bankrupt. Uh, Heman says, yeah, let's give them a 30% discount, that sounds fair. And uh, it sounds like a discount that uh, students would enjoy. It is. It's A, it's 30. You can use logic. Uh, the answer was clear as well. Okay. If you're the pub owner, what kind of a discount would you give students so that you can cover your operating costs? 30% sounds like a good deal. Okay. And then 17 to 20, this is a very typical type of question. I had this in my exam that I did back in February where you have to complete... Um, a paragraph like this, All right? No more than two words and or a number. Now, most of the computer-based exams are just one word, okay? All right. Uh, so in front of the library, there's a beautiful something. What's there? Navneet says it's a fountain. It is a fountain. Make sure you have correct spelling, F O U N. E-A-I-N, fountain. Inside the library, the ground floor has how many books? Number 18, how many books on the ground floor? It makes sense. Uh, yeah, uh, Chini says no books, has no books or zero books. Probably because of water damage or something like that. They're really careful not to put books there. The upper floors, however, house over 3 million books. The collection was built by donations, gifts, and university purchases. Additionally, there is a something area. Now, this was a tricky question um, because it's the name for this area in the library. Uh, Chini Close uh, Hemanth, you got it. Very good. With the S. There's a very important S here. So it's special collections okay and you only get this one correct if you have the s so a special collection z area okay it's called a special collections because it's more than just one collection it's multiple collections 
and you can actually count collections. So it's a special collections area with works dating back to, notice how works is also countable when you're talking about books, dating back to 1588. There are many sporting facilities, including the rugby field, which is home to the rugby team, which has won three of the past five something. Three of the past five. Honey says national championship. It's close, but not quite. Um, three of the past five national championships. Very good, Sadesh. And it's countable because it's three of five, right? So national championships. That's the correct answer. Okay. You have to have that, Elon Musk. Okay. All right. Count it up. Uh, what did you get from 20 students? So the total here for part one, part two is out of 20. Now, in a perfect world, you're getting uh, 16, 17 or more. So what did you get from 20? Like I say, your goal should be, let's say, 17 or more, okay? Uh, because you, part three, part four will be more challenging, so you don't want to lose too many. Prathamesh says 18, that's pretty good. Navneet says 17, that's great. Too much fun, 10 out of 20, sounds like you're having too much fun, not enough hitting the books. But, no, nah, I'm just kidding, you're in this class, you're doing great. Uh, study more, okay? Uh, Sunita, not too far from the desired score. MBX Gaming also, so another 3-4, okay? You want to get another 3-4, correct? Uh, Gia Roy, 16, just on the border, okay? All right. Um, again, students, you can uh, get six full practice exams on our website. Uh, you can get computer-based practice exams. And, of course, you get, uh, like, over 100 videos in HD, uh, with strategies. So check us out at ahelp.com. That's what I used today to play this audio. Uh, and uh, for general IELTS students, it's gieltshelp.com. Tomorrow I'm going to be back at the same time with this listening exam and we'll look at part three and part four. So we'll look at the more challenging parts and uh, do those together. Okay. NBX, come back tomorrow, do part three, part four. Then we'll look at your band score. Okay. All right. So that's it for this class for today, everyone. Again, I will be back tomorrow with some more listening to finish this exam. And if you enjoyed this lesson, definitely check us out at ahelp.com, gieltshelp.com. You'll find lots of goodies. We are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. Um, have a lovely day, everyone. You're very welcome, Prathamesh. Thanks for participating. Uh, Navneet, good job today. Eugene, thanks for those emojis. Let me just show them. There we go. Uh, and uh, I wish all of you a fantastic rest of your day. If it's getting late, sweet dreams. Much love to all of you. Bye for now. I'm Adrian signing out from beautiful Victoria, Canada.